Lewis diagrams are great about telling us about bonding, right? How these things are bonded, what the, what the relative idea is of arrangement for uh, the atoms around, say, a central atom. But you know what? What it doesn't really tell us is what the molecule looks like in three dimensions, right? Because everything is flat with a Lewis diagram on a piece of paper in two dimensions. Molecules aren't all flat, because if we were all flat, then we could all slide underneath a door to get, get from one room to another, and we don't do that, okay? What we, what we are is three-dimensional, and so molecules have three, are 3D. So when we draw it on paper in 2D, that's just to do the Lewis diagram to figure out bonds and stuff and how many we have between the atoms. Now, stereochemistry, or three-dimensional chemistry, because that's what stereo is, it's, it's about 3D, okay? So 3D chemistry involves something called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Some people say Vesper. I don't see how it spell, spells Vesper. It's Vesper. But the point is, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory helps us to determine what the general shapes of the molecules are going to be. So that's what we're going to do right now. Now, there are some rules that you have to know about the shapes. So what you have to do is you have to position atoms as far away from each other as possible with chemical bonds. Okay. And then recognize that lone pairs occupy more space than bonded electrons. That's just a general rule. Lone pairs occupy more space than bonded electrons. And to help us to determine shapes, like this word here, four effective pairs, what does that mean? Well, when you're counting effective pairs, you do this. A lone pair is an effective pair. A, bonding, uh, a bond, a single bond, is an effective pair. But a double bond sounds like two effective pairs, but it's not. You count all multiple bonds, single, double, or triple, you count them as one effective pair. And it's a little bit of a cheat in order to get the three-dimensionality of the molecule. So actually, here's the thing. You can draw a Lewis diagram sort of incorrectly by actually not considering, say, formal charges and where multiple bonds would have to be. But that's okay because you probably won't get the, the, the uh, structure of the molecule incorrect if you don't do the best Lewis diagram. Just thought I'd tell you in case you were in a hurry and needed to find a structure of something. You don't have to worry about that formal charge thing necessarily. Okay, so now, with that, here's where we start. We start off with molecules that have four effective pairs, and there are going to be some four general shapes to this. I want to show them to you, articulate them to you, and you've got to memorize them. Because when you're in an IB or an AP course, or just a course where your chemistry teacher wants you to know this, there are a ton of shapes, and there are a lot of shape names, and you got to get them under control. How do we categorize them? By effective pairs. So, the first one is when we have four effective pairs around a central atom. Well, what does that mean? We'll take a methane molecule, which is CH4. You draw the Lewis diagram of it, where the duets are completed for the hydrogens, the octet here for the carbon, and that's what it looks like. And you know what it looks like? When you draw that flat, all the bond angles here are 90 degrees. But you know, these hydrogens, they don't bond to each other, so they hate each other. So you've got to actually take them and move them away from each other as best you can in three-dimensional space. And that means then that they won't lie flat and have bond angles of what we say is 90 degrees, but it actually looks like this, right? So you take the central carbon atom and you put a hydrogen in the front, two hydrogens in the back, and one coming off the top, and that shape is maintained all the way around here, isn't it? This is a four, it looks like it's four, four, obviously four hydrogen atoms here attached to a central carbon. And what we call this seed shape here for four effective pairs, when you have one, two, three, four pairs of electrons, there are four effective pairs around a central atom, we call that tetrahedral. And that's a tetrahedral arrangement of electrons. So, when you have four effective pairs, you have a tetrahedral arrangement of electrons around a central atom. So, how would you actually draw that? Because, you know, it's all well and good to have a little model kit where you can actually build it. And by the way, they didn't build that, so the carbon atoms looks like they have, look at that, not 90 degrees, but a greater degree between the unbonded carbons here in three-dimensional space. So, when you don't have a, mo uh, a molecular model kit, what you do is, well, okay, the top one's fine. These two were going off the back. And that one was coming out the front, that hydrogen, and that's sort of a way that scientists say, that's how we draw a tetrahedral shape. We kind of do, if something's sticking out at you, we do a triangle here, and if something's going in the back, we put dotted lines, and if something's flat in that one plane, we just put a straight line. 
And that right there is called tetrahedral. And you know what you really do have to know as well? No kidding. The bond angles, of course, aren't 90. They're actually this. For a tetrahedral, for when you have four uh, atoms around the central here, one, two, three, four effective pairs of electrons, you actually have a 109.5 degree bond angle. You gotta memorize that one. But then there are other shapes that come off of the tetrahedral um, that I wanna show you. See, the tetrahedral arrangement doesn't mean you always have a tetrahedral shape. Here's NH3, that's ammonia. You draw ammonia on a piece of paper and you go like this and you put the lone pairs up there and that's eight for the total and that is the Lewis diagram for ammonia. But here's the deal. How many effective pairs around it? Bonding electrons, bonding pairs, and bonding pairs, <laughs> and lone pairs are still one effective pair. So watch this. One effective pair. Two, three, four. You got four effective pairs around there. But you know what? That, those lone pairs there, they don't count in the shape because they're kind of invisible. There's no bond there. Those are just those electrons that are in that orbital or in that space, and they're there. But here's the deal. They're not a bond, so they don't give shape to the molecule. So even though this has four effective pairs and a tetrahedral arrangement of one, two, three, four, uh, you don't have a tetrahedral. What do you actually have? You have this. You have a molecule where there's the nitrogen in the middle and you've got hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And there's a lone pair sitting on top here. Yeah, that's right. But it's not in the shape, as you can see, right? So it's like a tetrahedral, but you just pulled the top off. So now, what do you call that shape there that comes from the tetrahedral arrangement? Well, if you actually slapped uh, some plywood here, here, and here on these sides, you'd have a three-sided pyramid. And that's called pyramidal. So it's a pyramidal shape. That is the second shape. That is it. The first shape, CH4, gave a tetrahedral, and this one is pyramidal shape. And that's when you have this, when you have four effective pairs, but you have one lone pair in that shape. You get a pyramidal structure. Now, how do you draw that? One nitrogen coming out the back, one coming out the back, and then one coming towards you right there. I'm not going to fill that in. And then, you know, by the way, in, when you do the 3D diagram, you don't put in the lone pair. That's okay. So there you go right there. That's a pyramidal. That wasn't really pyramidal at all. This is the pyramidal here, right? And that pyramidal shape, now here's the thing. Bonding electrons, like you know that there's a lone pair here, and there's, there's three pairs of bonding electrons, one lone pair. Lone pairs occupy more space, so what they do is this. They say to these bonding electrons, hey, bonding electrons, move down, because I want more space. I occupy more space. And so this lone pair, even though we don't draw it in here, but this lone pair squeezes these bonds down. These bonds in the tetrahedron were 109.5 before, but now they're 107 degrees, and you do have to know that for the pyramidal structure.